Glad you could join us for another great instructional video from RealPars. Stay tuned till the end to learn more about our new online store, where you can purchase the Siemens brand products you see in our training courses. This video will answer two important questions for you. First, what is an ET200SP base unit? And second, how can you install and use this device in your system? Like you've come to expect from all RealPars videos, this training module is packed with relevant information that you can apply immediately on the job, and it's provided in an easy-to-follow, concise format. As always, if you have any questions about what you see, our RealPars team is always just a phone call or email away. So, let's get started. We'll begin by exploring this question. Exactly what is the ET200SP? The ET200SP from Siemens is one of the most popular remote I.O. units used on the market today. A remote I.O. is a two-ended configuration. One end features a set of input and output modules that are installed close to the sensor and actuators on the factory floor. The other end is connected to the PLC in the control room by a single cable. Before PLC engineers began using remote IOs, they had to wire all of the sensors and actuators on the factory floor directly to the PLC in the control room. Often that was a monumental task when you consider that in many large factories, the distance between the control room isn't measured in feet, but in miles. Imagine running that amount of cable to make that kind of connection. It wasn't efficient by any means, and also incredibly expensive. Fortunately, today, with the development of remote IOs, we're able to place the IOs right next to the sensors and actuators on the factory floor. Connect all the field devices to IO cards on the unit, and then connect the remote IO to the PLC at the other end via a single cable. Depending on your project configuration, this could be a Profinet or Profibus cable, or any other type of industrial networks. With this network configuration, the sensors and actuators on the factory floor send all of the signals to the remote I.O. first. Then, the remote I.O. takes those signals and sends them over to the PLC via a single cable. This way, instead of running all of the cables directly all the way to the PLC, only one cable is required to connect the field devices to the control room, a much more efficient and cost-effective solution. Somatic ET200SP is one of the most popular remote IOs manufactured by Siemens, the giant of industrial automation industry. This remote IO typically consists of two main parts, the head module and the input and output modules. Depending on the application, the unit may also include other modules, such as motor starters, which we will talk about in future videos. Here's a look at the head module. And these are the I.O. modules, which can either be digital inputs and outputs, or analog inputs and outputs. Now, let me show you what happens if I take one of these I.O. cards out. Take a look at another part here. We call this a base unit. The base unit is, as the name indicates, a base where you can install the I.O. cards. In order for you to be able to install the I.O. cards on the ET200SP, you must first have a base unit installed on the DIN rail. Once in place, you can install your I.O. card. Let's examine how to install each component of this ET200SP remote I.O. on the DIN rail. With the rail in place, you put the head module on the rail like this. Then push in the lower part lightly until you hear a click sound. The same goes for the base unit. You put it on the rail like this. Then push it into the rail, making sure the device clicks into the rail. Next, push the base unit to the left to attach it to the head module. When you hear that click sound, it means that the base unit has been properly connected to the head module. Now, the base unit can easily communicate data with the head module. I install the rest of the base units the same way. Let's move to the other end of the unit. 
Here's where you need to install a Terminator, or what Siemens calls, a server module, the same way you installed the base modules. Now, to install the I.O. cards, or the I.O. modules, you simply place the card on the base unit, like this. Then push it in slightly to hear the click sound. Now, this card is able to communicate data with the head module through the base unit. You can install the rest of the cards on the base units in the same way. To power up the head module, you need to first connect a 24 volt power to the module. Then, to power up the rest of the modules in the unit, you simply take the same two wires and connect them to these terminals of the first base unit. By doing this, you'll not only be able to power this module, but you'll see the power also follows through the rest of base units on the right, and turns on the rest of the modules as well. Bottom line, you don't have to connect any wire to these base units. Just connect the power to the first unit, and the rest will be taken care of. Now, you may ask, does this work with any other base unit setup as well? In other words, can I simply connect the power to the first one and then the power flows through to the rest of the modules? The answer is no. The reason the power can flow through from this base unit to the rest on the right is because I'm using a type A0 light colored base unit here. This module features, for example, type A0, A1, B0, B1, C0, and C1, among several others. Additionally, some of these types come in both light and dark colors. We'll leave the details of each type for another video. For this lesson, the important takeaway is this. As a rule of thumb, light colored base units are usually installed as the first module after the head module and can pass the power to the rest of the modules on the right. While the dark colored base units are usually installed from slot 2 onward and can receive power from the light colored base units on the right. If you need more info on this, you can check out the manual for ET200 SP base units on this page of RealPAR's online store. Or, if you're watching this video on YouTube or from any other website, just go to realpars.com and type in the words base unit in the search bar. That will bring up the product page from which you can download the manual. So, what we've learned to this point is that the ET200SP base unit allows the input and output cards on the remote I.O. to send and receive data from and to the head module. But how do the I.O. cards receive the signals from the sensors and actuators in the field? Well, this is where the base unit comes into play again. To connect the sensors and actuators in the field to the I.O. cards on the remote I.O., you take the wire from the sensor, put a wire ferrule on it, and then connect it to the push-in terminals on the base unit. Easy peasy, right? The reason we call these pushing terminals is because you can connect the wire to the terminals simply by pushing the wire into the terminal. No additional tools are required. When you think about it, this is very convenient compared to the classic terminal types where you need to use a screwdriver. With pushing terminals, you literally take the wire from the sensor or actuator, put a wire ferrule on it, and then push it into the terminal on the base unit and you have your sensor or actuator connected to the I.O. cards. By the way, if you want to learn how to connect a wire ferrule to a wire, we have a YouTube video that covers this procedure. Just type the words, How to Wire Sensors to a PLC, into the YouTube search bar, and the video will pop up for you. To make it easier, we've also included the link in the description below the video you're watching now. To summarize, to set up a remote I.O. or terminal unit, as it's sometimes called, you first connect the power to the head module. Then take the same two wires and connect them to the light-colored base unit. The light-colored base unit feeds the power through the rest of the modules on the right as well. To connect the sensors and actuators to the I.O. cards, you need to place a wire ferrule on the wire 
and connect it to the terminal on the base unit. To connect the whole unit of ET200SP to the PLC in the control room, you connect a Profinet cable to the Profinet port on the head module and then connect it to the same port on the PLC. So let's summarize everything you've learned in this video. The ET200SP base unit is an essential part of the ET200SP remote I.O. The base unit does three things. One, it powers the I.O. cards. Two, it connects the sensors and actuators to the I.O. cards via the terminals here. And three, on the other end, it connects the I.O. cards to the head modules by allowing the cards to send and receive data from and to the head module. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you now have a good understanding of what a base unit is and how it actually works. Here at RealPars, we're all about making your work life easier. One great way we do that is through our Gear Up with RealPars online store, the fast, convenient way to order the automation products you learn about here and need on the job. Orders can be placed on our website product page, or if you're watching this on another website or video platform, go to RealPars.com and look for the order number. To help you out, our experts are available 24-7 to answer your technical questions. If you learned something new from this video, please go ahead and click the like button. This helps us know we're doing things right on your behalf, and it will encourage us to keep creating new high-quality videos to help you get ahead in your PLC career. Also, don't forget to click the subscribe button to keep up with our video content. If you also click on the little bell icon, you'll receive a notification each time a brand new RealPars video gets posted. Remember, the RealPars team is committed to helping you keep learning, keep current, and keep succeeding. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.